So, now that the yen is reaching catastrophic new lows and that, as a consequence, life in Japan for many of us might be inevitably changing, I would like to share with you some of the best side hustles and ways in which you can generate additional income while you're in Japan or while you're thinking about coming. Now, I'm also going to be giving them a score from 1 to 5 in terms of how much time they can require, what kinds of skills you might need, and ultimately, how profitable they can be all to help you make the right and the best choice for your particular situation. Now, for those of you watching me for the first time, my name is Gabriel. I'm a business owner living in Tokyo, Japan for over five years, where I currently run and manage my own business. And so as always, if you find it useful, I would greatly appreciate it if you subscribe and like this video. Now, with that out of the way, let's get to number one. Now, what if I told you that for this first side hustle, you already have a certain quality that can open many doors for you in this field. And that's because I'm talking about a specific type of side hustle that will only be available for you because of your race. Now, let me explain. As I'm sure many of you know, here in Japan, as well as in many other parts of Asia, there exists this perception that associating with a foreigner means prestige and legitimacy and some kind of international status. And so, of course, there are many companies and high brand establishments that look to hire specifically foreigners for certain types of events. Now, just to be perfectly clear, I'm not talking about those insane so-called white monkey jobs that you find in places like China, where you basically have the government paying you to start spreading political propaganda. That's not what I'm talking about. Now, here in Japan, you basically have the local branches of those very well-established brands like Cartier, Louis Vuitton, Loro Piana, Hermes, and many others, that whenever they hold an event, whether that's in-store or an event for the executives, or even private events for their VIP customers, they look to hire specifically foreign staff, just to stay on brand, if you will. After all, these are European establishments, and so they're trying to offer their customers the type of experience that they're looking for. And these jobs are generally very quick. They can range from simply being a server to maybe standing at the entrance welcoming the guests, or even playing music in the back if that's something you do. And so for that, they're not really at all demanding in terms of skills, so I'm going to give it a five. So what you can do to work in this field is basically contact these talent agencies here in Japan that specialize on working with foreigners, and they will call you and ask you to step in and work for these events. And the same thing goes for things like modeling or maybe doing some small TV appearances as an extra and so on. Now, I know, and I'm sure you know as well, that there are people out there that like to look for a reason to make anything discriminatory or derogatory in some way. And firstly, I find that reasoning to be absolutely illogical. And second, I think a job is a job. And particularly these kinds of jobs can pay very well. Me personally, back in my day, I did take quite a few of these jobs as a musician for some of these high brand establishments, and they can easily pay upwards of $5,000 for a handful of days of work. That's why I think this is currently one of the best and most profitable side hustles you can have here in Japan. And I personally have a few acquaintances that have been living in this country for over 30 years and have based their entire careers on this very prospect, making upwards of six figures a year. And just to be clear, I'm talking about US dollars for the sake of simplicity. So if you try it out and you think you might want to turn this into a full-time thing, that can also become something very profitable for you. And so for that, I'm going to give it a five in terms of how much money you can make. But when it comes to time investment, things get a little bit more delicate because as you know, working for these companies or working for these type of events, sometimes the event can happen in the middle of a work week or sometimes they can be very late at night or sometimes even in an entirely different city. So if you, if you already have a full-time job or if you have other responsibilities, like maybe you have a family or maybe you're going to school, then that can of course make things a little bit more difficult for you. And so for that, I'm going to have to give it a two. Now moving on to our next side hustle. Currently, video editing and specifically short form video editing is in very high demand. And for anyone that makes videos for a living or that is regularly involved with YouTube or with social media, it is very difficult to find a good video editor. Now, of course, long form video editing is also in very high demand, but you have to consider that this is going to require a much higher time commitment on your behalf. Now, in terms of skills, if you want to make a living as a video editor, then of course, you have to be very good at it. And that means actually investing the time and the resources necessary to acquire all the necessary skills. 
and that goes from simply learning how to use the software properly which fortunately now on the internet you have tons of tools and resources that can help you with that to being able to have the right communication skills to reach out and acquire your own customers and also to be able to adapt to their style and their choices of editing and so for that in terms of skills i'm going to give it a two because if you're a complete beginner then that's going to mean a very sizable commitment on your part now of course if you're just looking to make some additional income then you don't have to be the very best Having said that, the big plus of this side hustle is its flexibility. Being a freelance or a part-time video editor means that you can work on your own terms. You can work as many hours as you want. And because of the type of work that you do, that also means you can work with clients from all over the world. And so you're not restrained simply by the clients you might have in your area. And so for that, I have to give it a five. Now, in terms of how profitable this side hustle can be, you will see that if you access freelance service websites like Fiverr or any other, the range that you can charge for your services will vary greatly depending on the type of service that you offer. And it can go anywhere from 10 US dollars to 100 US dollars or more. Whether you're editing simple shorts or reels or editing long form videos or cinematic videos or even real estate tours. However, like I said before, it's all vastly going to depend on how many hours you decide and are willing to invest into this side hustle. And so for that, I'm going to have to give it a three. Now, our next side hustle, I would say it's definitely one of the most common and one of the most popular currently, and that's becoming a freelance language teacher. Now, here in Japan, there are many places that are willing to hire you from abroad and even sponsor your visa to come teach English or any other language in their schools here in Japan. However, if you already have a full-time job or if you're simply not interested in working for these kinds of institutions, then your next best option is becoming a freelance instructor. Unfortunately, here in Japan, there are also many, many platforms that can help you precisely with that. So if you register with one of them, you'll see that many of them actually work a little bit like an online dating site in the sense that once you register, they'll start immediately looking to pair you up with customers that match with the services that you offer. And so that means they'll be taking the weight off your shoulders of having to advertise your lessons or having to reach out and try to get your own customers yourself. Now, in terms of how much money you can get from this side hustle, you can get anywhere from 2,000 to 6,000 yen per hour. And that's going to be around this much given the current exchange rate, which is not great, but you can still make a substantial amount of money if you get a good number of students. But then again, getting more students means also a bigger time commitment on your part, because unlike the previous side hustle where you can work on multiple projects at once, here, one hour of your time means one lesson and so that means there's a very limited potential for maximizing your time and so for that i'm going to have to give it a two for profitability and a two for time and in terms of skills well i guess you do have to be able to teach or at least you would have to be able to hold a proper conversation if you're specializing in ekawa which is specifically english conversation lessons but i guess if it's your first language then that's going to make things a lot easier for you so for that i'm going to give it a four but now, let's say you don't like to teach and you're not interested at all in giving language lessons, but you still believe that your best option is doing something related to the languages that you speak. In that case, I think your next best option is going to be proofreading and translations. And the convenient thing about this side hustle is that, in fact, you don't need to meet anyone in person. And like I mentioned earlier, because of the nature of this work, you can literally take clients from anywhere in the world. And that's going to give you, of course, a much greater flexibility in terms of time and location. Now, for those of you wondering what exactly is proofreading? Well, in short, as a proofreader, you'll be receiving documents and articles from a company and you'll be expected to check them from any grammatical or translation errors and return them in perfect grammatical conditions in the target language. So in terms of skills, you don't really need to have any specific type of skill other than, of course, having impeccable grammar. The convenient thing is that now with tools like ChatGPT or any other online translation tool, you can actually have them do a big portion of the work for you. But there are still many companies looking for a human eye to correct any imperfections. If you've worked with AI, I'm sure you've noticed that sometimes they can make unbelievable mistakes when it comes to translations. And that's even more so the case when you're translating to or from Asian languages. So you can basically look for any proofreading or translating jobs on any job search site, both here in Japan or abroad, in basically any language that's most convenient for you. But I do have to say that it's most likely that many of these jobs are going to involve speaking or writing in English. So keeping that in mind, I think I'm going to have to give this one a five. 
As for how much money you can expect to make with this side hustle, well, that's vastly going to depend, first of all, on your experience, on the company that's offering you the job and on the country where this company is located. But you can expect it to range anywhere from $10,000 and uh, wait, let's calm down for a second, $10 an hour to $50 an hour. So keeping this in mind and depending on how much you're getting paid and considering the fact that at an early stage you cannot really decide your hourly rate, I'm going to have to give this one a three. Now, in terms of time, just like with video editing, you can basically manage your time however you wish. That means you can work as many hours as you want and you can work even on multiple projects at the same time. And that's of course going to make you a lot more efficient when it comes to how you generate your additional income. And so for that, I'm going to have to give this one a five as well. Now, just like that, there are many other side hustles that you can take advantage of while you live in Japan. However, there is one very important piece of information that I need you to remember, and that is, if you come here to Japan with a work visa, for example, you can do side hustles, you can do freelance work, but if it's outside of your field of work, you're most likely going to have to get a permission from the immigration office. That means that if you come here to Japan as an IT engineer, but you want to give language lessons, you're most likely going to have to go to the immigration office and request an official permission. So before you start looking for additional sources of income, make sure you have everything in order so that you can avoid any problems and headaches in your future. But if you want to know more details about this, go watch this video right here so that you can have all the necessary information about how to get your visa in Japan. So don't miss it. And in the meantime, take care and I'll see you next time.